Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar on how to win builder business. Uh, today, this will serve as a really great intro if you haven't marketed to builders before on just how to go about winning that business. Today's webinar is sponsored by Mortgage Pro by Zonda. It helps loan officers secure more builder business by helping them identify opportunities to create relationships and increase closings, help them connect by meeting directly with top builder decision makers nationwide, and then grow that business by increasing your market share in the new home construction space. We're really excited to announce Zonda's newest listing service coming in spring of this year called Livable. Uh, this will help connect the consumer directly to the most accurate and accessible content in the new home construction space. If you're interested in more information on our new Livable platform, please reach out to Karen Bonder to learn more. Her email address is on the slide below at kbonder at zondahome.com. Now today, we have a lot to cover in a 30 minute session. Uh, so rest assured that the recording will be available afterwards. And if you have any additional questions, please take note of my contact information at the end and reach out to me directly. I'd be happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. Now today, our session overview. Number one, we're gonna start with the whys. Why market to builders and why it's particularly important in this market environment. Number two, if you're going to commit to marketing to builders, there are five things that you need to know in order to be able to come across as a credible source of information. Number three, we're going to talk about prospecting efforts and what does that look like? There are two separate avenues, prospecting for turn down business or prospecting for preferred business. Number four, we'll talk about leveraging your own tools, that proprietary support that you have, those loan programs in your own organization, marketing support, and then of course, what we offer at Zonda Mortgage. And then if we have time at the end, we will open it up for Q&A, but please feel free to drop your questions in the chat box and we will get to them as we can. So number one, let's start with the why. The biggest reason, resale inventory is still dramatically low and builders are really the future of increased supply. If we really break down these numbers, new resale listings are down 20% year over year. That's significant. Why? Because sellers are hesitant to give up their rates in the twos or threes in favor of one in the five, sixes, or even sevens. Essentially, this would require them to double or triple their mortgage payment in for the same type of quality of house. Just doesn't make sense. Now remember that sellers create buyers and sellers just can't make sense of moving, right? So if we look at the distribution of interest rate, we can see that almost 86% of homeowners have a rate at or below 5%. 64.9% of homeowners have a rate at or below 4%. So again, understanding why that resale inventory isn't necessarily opening up is because it just doesn't make financial sense in most cases. People who are putting their houses on the market are people who have to move, whether it's through a divorce or through relocation or perhaps a death in a family. And so for these reasons, we just have this bottleneck of lack of inventory which brings us to Builder and why Builder is so important right now. New construction is actually 35% of the total inventory for sale right now, 35%. So what does that mean? We break it down, we know that one in three, over one in three homes for sale is new construction. So if you aren't working with builders, you're essentially turning away 35% of the total inventory pool of buyer potential. So this is the time. Those that survive do not do so by being smarter or stronger. They do it by being adaptable and really sort of reading the room and understanding when it's time to shift and reinvest. Number two reason to uh, market to builders, 
RIP refis, right? We know they're gone. Um, again, we mentioned the current interest rates of what the majority of homeowners have across the country. And we just do not see rates sort of coming back down into those twos and threes in the near future. Now, of course, I always say when I talk about interest rates and predicting them, you have to do it with a lot of humility because what COVID taught us is that we really can't predict the future. But I will say right now, it is an excellent opportunity to market to those builders. If we look at the national builder opportunity, we can see that there are actually uh, just about 34,000 unique builders across the country. We can see there's an average loan amount of about $380,000, which is a significant increase over what those resale numbers are. So a great way to sort of boost that business. Reason number four to market to builders. The business of prospecting referral partners has absolutely changed. If we take out the fact that one third of the inventory is actually new construction and re-understand the fact that it isn't the same to market to realtors as it was five or 10 years ago, right? What we know now, thanks to the Amazon effect, is that today's consumer is much more savvy and comfortable of shopping online. So in these times, we can see that Many times, first-time home buyers or even move-up buyers have actually already gone through the pre-qualification process online prior to even contacting a real estate agent. So if you're depending on those realtors to be able to provide you with referrals, that sort of really funneled down and you're going to need about five times the amount of realtors in your bucket in order to get the same amount of referrals as what you needed in years past. Now, Reason number five, and if you ask my husband, he'll tell you that this is a big one, right? Neiman Marcus is more fun than Target, which is more fun than Walmart, right? It's all about the money. So where is the opportunity? Well, many builder LOs do 10 plus loans a month, which makes for really great consistent loan volume. Now with an average new build loan amount of $400,000, that's nearly $50 million in production. That's significant and it's consistent. Why? Because we know that builders are able to really ensure through that incentive money that their preferred lender does get the business uh, that they are referring. So hopefully this inspires you a little bit to understand why it's so important to be able to market to builders in today's environment. But if you're going to do it, there are five things that you really need to be able to know. Number one, the current builder market landscape. Number two, how to even go about discovering the right builders to target in your area. Number three, prospecting strategies. Are you trying to go for that preferred or turn down lender status? Number four, the power of proprietary. And then number five, the importance of knowing where you are in order to get where you want to be. So let's break those down. Number one, understanding the current market landscape. We can see that resale inventory is still extremely low. It makes new builds not only an attractive option, but an obvious option um, in terms of choice and selection. I also want to point out that the average millennial is 32 years old, and the average millennial also gets married at 32 years old, which we know is a big catalyst in terms of buying a house. Now, millennials love new builds for a variety of different reasons. Um, it supports their efforts in work from home, great infrastructure in terms of having that internet support um, to really be able to keep to have those sort of capacities available. We also know that millennials love choosing their options, selections. They like everything new, fresh, clean. Uh, so again, millennials do love new builds. Now on the loan side, we also know that those closing cost assistance is also really meaningful to those millennials or whether it's also buying that rate down. So again, builders are great partners in being able to make sure that that happens. Now there is still concern, obviously, with affordability. Last week, we saw rates in the high fives. Right now, they're back up in the mid sixes, uh, thanks to that pesky jobs report that happened. But we've got to really address the elephant in the room in terms of affordability. I always say, though, that with concern is opportunity. So where some other lender is dropping the ball, really understanding where there might be an opportunity to provide a solution. And if you're able to provide a solution, particularly in those affordability challenge markets, you're going to see some real success. Um, builders are still experiencing supply chain issues, but it's not as bad as once 
it once was. And they, again, are ready and willing to assist with incentives in order to really qualify more buyers. Number two, how to discover the right builders and subdivisions to target in your area. Well, the biggest thing is really committing to it, right? Visit those nearby subdivisions and do your research ahead of time, right? Align with builders in your bucket. And what I mean by that is if you know that you win business in the resale space, in the non-conforming market, then you're going to want to take those same types of programs and products and find builders that have a need for that type of loan program. Now, on the converse side of it, if you don't do great non-conforming, but maybe you have fantastic first-time home buyer products, you're going to want to align with builders that have a need for what it is that you offer that makes you shine. Now, you're going to want to know your strategy. Are you going for turned down business or are you going for preferred business? And we'll break that down a little bit more in the coming slides. Now, for those of you who are Zonda Mortgage Pro customers, I always encourage you to use the builder capture detail function, which allows you to really quickly identify which builders are out there that don't necessarily have a solid lender relationship. Now, I always encourage people to get involved in your HBAs, your BIAs, NAHB. It's not enough just to show up to the breakfast or to the event. You really want to get involved so that you can create some meaningful relationships. If you are a customer of Zonda, I always suggest that you attend your local Zonda briefings. They're highly attended by builders themselves. And so you will be able to have the opportunity to connect and grow those relationships in person. But I think at the end of the day, it's got to be consistency over creativity every single time. You've got to show up. Now, one piece that's different in the builder market than resale is that there are floaters, right? Even sales agents and builders office gets days off. So you want to make sure that the days that you go in there uh, to visit once a week are the days that the actual sales person is working, not necessarily the floater. Um, and also, it's so important to ask that particular sales agent the best day for you to be able to come so that you are respecting their schedule. It's not a great idea ever to show up on a Saturday afternoon when they are dealing with people who are coming through and hopefully trying to buy a house. Now, another way I mentioned our Zonda events, we have so many opportunities for people to be able to connect. Um, please take a screenshot here. Uh, we have Phoenix Dealmakers coming up in two weeks uh, in sunny Phoenix. Uh, can't wait to be able to see people there. And that is open for all of our customers um, and non-customers as well with sponsorship opportunities available as well. Now, number three, know your strategy. Are you going to that turn down or are you going to try to be a preferred lender? What does that even mean? A turn down lender is typically one where you've got your national or large builders, which typically have their own mortgage company or a joint venture. You're really there when someone has declined the loan already and you might have a specific product that helps save those deals. Now, your preferred business is going to be those small to mid-sized level local regional builders that are really going to rely on you as a lender, not just to do an outstanding job on the loans, but also to help fill voids with technology, marketing, driving exposure to their projects. And so let's break that down even a little bit more. If I decided I've got some great first-time homebuyer products or I've got some solutions that could help really fill voids in that national level space, how do I go about prospecting there? Well, number one, like I said, creativity does not beat consistency ever. Be consistent, show up, visit those nearby subdivisions weekly. Number two, determine the financing needs of that subdivision. And then go back and say, what niche products do I have in order to sort of set me apart and really make me a hero? Pair those program offerings with the need of the subdivision. I cannot emphasize this piece enough. Become a creative loan technician. Really dig deep into your products and understand where you can provide a unique solution. 
Um, and then of course, ask for the business. What can it hurt? You know, I've watched a lot of loan officers do the work and never really say, you know, hey, I've been coming in here for six to eight weeks every week. You know, I want to provide value. Of course, I value uh, loyalty. But if your lender isn't showing up every week, really wanting to earn your business, then just give me a shot because I promise you, you won't be disappointed. And if you ask for that business, um, human nature, after you've put in the effort, is they're going to want to give you a try. Now, if you want to become a preferred lender, again, these are those small to mid-tier level builders. Marketing, technology, these items are going to help make the difference. Really work to uncover their pain points. You know, a lot of times with these smaller builders, you've got people that wear multiple hats. You know, you, they might be doing purchasing and they might be doing sales and marketing and they might be also helping to write contracts or transaction coordination. And so really sort of saying, how can I help you? Let's do a checklist of things that I can offer. And do you think that you might find value in that? Um, if you have questions about that, I'm happy to always consult and give you some advice and some sort of guidelines on some questions that you might be able to ask. I always say, and this one is really, really important in particular with these smaller to local uh, regional builders is really respect the story. Do your research, respect the blood, sweat, and tears. Um, I think that a, it's lost on a lot of loan officers that sometimes projects take 10 to 15 to 20 sometimes years in entitlement and, and other legal issues before they're actually able just to get the slab board, right? So I think the understanding and sort of making sure that the builder understands that you respect everything that it took in order to get to the point where you're able just to close the end loan is really, really important. Also know their story. If they were one of the first green builders in your area, be able to speak on that. Do your research and it's going to go a long way. Um, and then, of course, for our Zonda Mortgage customers, leveraging that builder capture detail in order to uncover builders without a solid preferred lender relationship is the easiest and fastest, most accurate way to determine what opportunity currently exists. So awesome. You've done all these things. You've showed up. You've provided value. You've finally earned your first deal panic, right? Like now what? Well, no, just take great care of it. In the builder community, word spreads. Um, if you do a great job on one loan, you're also going to find out that you're going to get passed on into builders, other subdivisions and saying like, oh, you know what? This person really helped me save a deal. You might want to be able to reach out to them if you're having problems um, with managing that pipeline. So just take excellent care of it. Under promise, over deliver wins every time. But if we look at the overall scope of what the end game is, here's it. It, it. Here it is, right? Number one, visit those subdivisions. Visit them weekly. Show up. Earn your first few deals. Do a great job on those deals. Really impress and create a relationship with that sales agent. Number three, and this is a real big piece of it, leverage your sales agent who you've done a great job for to help obtain a meeting with that sales manager or decision maker in terms of who those preferred lenders are. With the end goal, stage four, being work on getting on the preferred lender list so that the builder will release incentives if you are the lender of choice. Number four, let's talk about the power of proprietary loan programs. Builders love, love niche programs. Um, you may never use this loan program, but the idea that you offer it is particularly attractive because it sort of helps the builder realize that you are able to think outside of the box. Um, currently, permanent rate buy-downs are particularly attractive, not widely available. If you have them, that is something that you definitely want to speak to a builder about. Um, reason being, I know a lot of companies do offer a 2-1 buy-down or a 3-2-1 buy-down, but obviously you have to qualify on that end rate. So it doesn't necessarily solve for the problems of DTI or qualification. So those affordability solutions are much needed. If you have those permanent, permanent rate buy-downs, it's definitely something you want to bring to the table. 
um, marketing programs, technology programs, uh, transparency through pipeline. These are all things that are also extremely meaningful and important to builders, uh, particularly over the last 12 months where builders have been burned by poor pipeline management. Obviously, there was delayed build times due to COVID, supply chain issues, labor shortages, um, which resulted in people writing a contract at 2.75%. And then when they're finally ready to close, due to all of these delays, now rates are you know in the high fives or sixes, and now these buyers no longer qualify. And so it's important for builders to understand that that pipeline is protected. And so anything that you can do to help them feel comfortable and ensure that that pipeline is protected is going to be particularly meaningful. Um, but marketing programs, driving exposure to these projects, helping them scale closings, and very importantly, know the market and educate. You know, at Zonda, we do have so many different events where you will be able to understand those local, regional, and national housing trends so that you're able to speak intelligently and provide value to your builders and sales agents through that avenue. And number five, really sort of understanding where you are in order to get where you want to be. I think in my experience, one of the biggest mistakes that most loan officers make is they think that once they've become a preferred lender, they think sort of now the work is done and money is in the bank, right? Well, the reality is that builders are always being marketed just like realtors. So if you aren't actively monitoring that market share, it's difficult to understand the value of your relationship. And so I always suggest that any of our customers at Zonda really go in and leverage our data set in order to be able to understand at that subdivision level, you know, what is the market share looking like in the last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. And I think that right now there's so much opportunity in the space just because of um, you know, mortgage companies obviously closing doors or, you know, pipelines being mismanaged. And so if you're able to, again, be a creative loan technician, really be an outstanding communicator um, and have a plan in place for transparency, there is so much opportunity right now. And again, like I said, with all of the inventory that's out there and new construction representing over one third of that um, available inventory, now is really the time to sort of shift, pivot, and make your move. Now, if you're doing it, obviously, there are key indicators and common business challenges that are associated with growing builder business. And, and we've touched on some of them in the webinar today. You know, how do I identify my builder leads? Which markets should I be targeting? You know, what is my competition doing? What's my market share? What's the remaining opportunity in a specific subdivision? You know, obviously the last thing that you want to do is invest in going to a subdivision for eight straight weeks, not understanding that it's already in closeout, right? So making sure there is enough opportunity that's left in the current subdivision, and then also understanding what's coming down in the future so that you can secure your position as a preferred lender prior to them actually opening their doors. Um, how can I forecast more effectively? How do I build our brand and network? How do I recruit top purchase performers? And so these are all items that we offer at Zonda. Of course, I'm always happy to be able to uh, consult, connect, provide a demo uh, for what our product solutions are. Um, please also understand that our recording of this webinar will be posted uh, within 24 hours on our social media channels and also on our blog at zondahome.com forward slash blog. And I also have put my own personal uh, information up here. Please connect with me on LinkedIn, as well as here's my email address if you would like to reach out for some individual information. And I would be more than happy uh, to assist. Any questions um, I, that I might be able to answer for anyone? I might have time for one or two questions. Hey, Nick. So, so far we have one question in the chat here. Um, Michelle asked, do you know when we will be bringing on a longer term lock? Well, um, I think that that's specific to your own organization. So I, that would be something that I would speak to your corporate office on and they would be able to advise. All right. And Francisco asked, any idea what top three, five, 10 markets for new builds are? 
Oh, that's great question. Um, right now, we're seeing a ton of activity in the Southeast. So Florida has been absolutely on fire. Um, Texas is actually been representative of over 20% of the entire country's new construction space. So uh, four of the top six MSAs across the country are in Texas with uh, Dallas and Austin, San Antonio, um, you know, great markets there, Austin. So yeah, those are big markets. We're also seeing Inland Empire still, um, Sacramento, um, you know, Phoenix has had a rough market, um, but there's still a lot of inventory available there. And I think as soon as rates drop again, you know, one of the things that we actually noticed when rates dropped last week, and we saw that five handle for a little while, um, we saw mortgage applications spike 28%, right? So we know that these buyers are on the sideline. We're just sort of waiting. And we know that mad rush is going to help drive prices back up again. Fantastic. Uh, Brian here wants to know if we have a link to the Phoenix Dealmakers event. Brian, if you go to zondahome.com slash events, you will find the reg link and the website link there to learn more along with all of the other events. Um, and Nick, do we have time for more questions? They're coming in. Um, you know, just one more, I'll have time to answer. And someone asked that when we talk about mid-sized builders, how many new builds would that be in a year? 50, 100, 200 compared to the large builders. Um, typically, I say the threshold's really about 500 a year. Um, that's typically what I see is that dividing line where someone might find it advantageous to have a joint venture partnership or not. <laughs> Excuse me. But yeah, I would say anywhere from 500, maybe up to 750 a year, just depending on the builder and their setup. Excellent. Do you have time for another? Um, perfect. Interim financing. Um, would offering interim financing to smaller builders help? Absolutely. Um, not to every smaller builder, but um, for some, certainly that development money is appetizing. So absolutely worth discussing as part of your value proposition. Excellent. Perfect. Um, would you like any more? I think that will wrap it up. Right. Excellent. If you have any questions, though, like I said, please feel free to reach out, email me. Um, also connect on LinkedIn. I'm always trying to share valuable information or events that we have coming up. Um, the Phoenix Dealmakers event. So awesome. One of my favorite events of the year. We're expecting close to 700 people there. Um, everyone from builders, developers, mortgage, you'll find some real estate specialists um, there. So great opportunity just for networking. We call it deal makers because um, it goes without saying that people make deals happen at this event. So great way to be able uh, to connect and learn. Uh, it's about four hours. It's a whole morning and, and definitely worth your while. So please, I hope to see you there. Thank you, Nicolette. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.